Okay, part three of my solar system generating simulation thingamabob. Um, this, by the way, is not my example. This is an example by Andres Colubri. It is comes with processing under examples, demos, graphics, planets. You can take a look at it. It's using some similar stuff that I'm using in my example, but the reason why I'm pointing to it right now is you'll notice that the planets that you're seeing are not just plain old spheres that are white or one single color. They have a texture to it, a texture that is an image. So what I want to show you now is how to add image textures to a sphere, just like in this example, in the one that I've been building. So the first thing is we need some image textures. Boy, I would love to make a video, somebody remind me someday of how to generate your own texture using Perl and Noise, and you could automate procedurally generate textures for all your planets. That's gonna be a part something to this eventually. But for now, what I'm gonna do is get some image textures. So um, Andres, uh, in the example here, you can see that he has a link to a site called Planet Pixel Emporium. This is what the site looks like. For example, down here, I can click on Earth, and I can go down here and I can get this particular uh, texture. It's just a rectangular image and what's going to happen in processing is this image is going to be taken and wrapped around that sphere. So how do you do that? So I've already downloaded a bunch, of, I've, I'm going to close this and I'm back, this is my example. If you don't recall, this is what it looks like. Um, I, what I'm going to do is now add the textures to these spheres. So I've already downloaded a bunch of JPEG files, PNGs would work, various file formats, and I've got them in the data folder. So I'm just gonna look at those real quick, and I'm gonna actually just rename these. Uh, Earth, I, I should have done this before I started, Mars, uh, Mercury, and Sun, and all of these come from that particular website, uh, Pixel Emporium, Planet Pixel Emporium, I will have a link to it in this video's description. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to say p image Im, uh, image equal uh, and then in setup I'm going to say load image sun.jpg. So the first thing I need to do is just have that image loaded into a variable, a variable of type p image loaded into that, and now I need this image to somehow be attached to that sphere. Let's go to where we're drawing the sphere. Now I am drawing the sphere right here. This is known as immediate mode rendering, I think. Yes. <laughs> Save mode, immediate mode. The point is, I'm like drawing the sphere. So it's like calculating and figuring out and making the sphere on the fly. There is something in processing called a P shape, which is an object that can store geometry about any type of shape. So it can have, you can make a P shape that's a, a geometry of a collection of shapes, that's a custom polygon, that's a sphere, that's a rectangle. So what I need to do to automatically texture this sphere is to use a P shape variable, which will make it a little bit easier to deal with. So I'm gonna go back up here and say, P shape, I'm gonna to add to every planet object is gonna have a P shape associated with it. And I'm gonna call that P shape globe because it's going to be a sphere. And then in setup, I'm gonna say, not in setup, sorry, in the planet's constructor, I'm gonna say globe equals create shape. So create shape is the generic function to make a P shape object. You can make group, P shapes, you can make primitive P shapes, which is like rectangle, ellipse, sphere, box, or you can make custom P shapes, which are just set out of a lot of vertices. And boy, this would be another great topic for a video. But for right now, I'm gonna make a primitive P shape, which is just a sphere, and I also need to give it some size. Guess what? I have the size right there, radius. Now, the other thing I want to do, this is going to seem a little bit strange, is right here, I'm going to say no stroke and no fill. Because when I call create shape, it's going to pick up the stroke and fill that are kind of currently assigned. Now, there's all sorts of other ways. I think you can call set stroke or set fill, and then you can change those later as the program is running. But for right now, I just want a sphere with no stroke. And you know what, actually? <laughs> what I want, just to make sure this is working, is set the fill to 255. So I just want to have my shape be white. I'm not going to add the texture just yet. And the, now the other thing I'm going to change now that I've made that P shape object is here, instead of drawing the shape, drawing the sphere with sort of immediate rendering, I'm going to render that pre-calculated save geometry, that sphere that was already made. So I'm going to say now, shape globe. So the shape function renders a particular P shape object to the scene that P-shape object being the globe. So if I run this, we, sh we have exactly the same thing. And just to make sure this is really doing what I think it's doing, let me do that. <laughs> I'm afraid. Ah, yes, and now they're all red. So you can see how this is working. Now, the thing is, I actually don't want to fill. 
I want to say no fill, and this is what is so wonderful about working with P shapes and spheres and textures is processing behind the scenes will automatically figure out how to do all of the mapping of the image and the pixels to the pod. There's all sorts of interesting custom ways of doing this, but I can actually just say globe set texture IMG and run this. And magically, you can see all these planets now have that one sun texture. I can zoom in and you can see it's that same texture on all of them. So we're kind of even, I didn't, hit, I didn't hit my timer, so I don't know how long I've been going. But just a few minutes, five minutes at the most into this video, I already have textures on these planets. So what do I want to do next? Well, I only want to have the sun texture on the center one, and then I want to have other textures on the others. So let's figure out how to do that. What I think might make sense is to, um, I'm going to make a variable called sun texture to load that. And then I'm going to make another variable, which I will make an array. Uh, well, I'll just call textures. And how many do I have? I have one, two, I just have three. So let's have three. And then I'm going to say uh, textures index zero equals, and now I have po apologies for the tedium of this, Mars, Earth, I'm going to load these just sort of manually into the array, manually setting the index spots. Mars, Earth, Mercury. So now, where should the planet get assigned its texture? I just kind of globally assigned it one, but I think what would make sense is for the planet to have a particular, actually, I don't need a variable. What I just need here is to add a fourth argument called image. So when I create a planet, planet, <laughs> I give it a radius, a distance from whatever it's orbiting around, that O is for an orbital speed, and an image, which is its texture. So right now I could say, for example, make the sun with the sun texture, and I could say here, make every other planet with uh, textures index zero, which was what? Mars. Let's do textures index one to be the Earth texture. So whenever I make any other planets, make it textures index one, the Earth. And you know, I could run this. I missed something important. Actually, I didn't. And you can see now, look at that. Um, because I, I now have the sun as the center and all the other ones have the Earth texture. Okay, this is getting good. Now what I want to do though is have each of these have a different texture. So what I could do, where did I assign that earth texture? It was right here. There's no reason why I couldn't get a random number. Oops, I already used R. So let's just call this index and a random number between zero and textures.length and then have that be a random texture. So when I create the planet, uh, the radius shrinks, the distance is random, the orbital speed is random, and the texture is a random one from the other textures I have. And if I run this again, and you can see now, I don't know why we didn't get any Earth ones. Let's run this again. <laughs> there we go. So you can see now, um, and by the way, I'm, it's funny how I'm zooming, but I can actually just zoom in processing now because I have PZ cam. Okay, <laughs> never mind, I'm not as good at doing that. You can see that all of the planets have different textures and you can see, and, and it kind of creates more of it. Now, blah, 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 I lost my ability to speak. <laughs> okay, so now we have this solar system thing. Now, there's a few more things we could add to this. Number one is, it would be interesting to make the orbits elliptical. I'm gonna leave that as a thought experiment for anybody watching this video to discuss in the comments and maybe post a version of it. Um, but you could think about how that radius changes as it's orbiting. It gets wider, it gets shorter based on the angle of rotation. That's something you might try. But what I want to do now is just change the lighting a little bit. I think it would be interesting to, instead of having generic lighting, to actually have the lighting come from the sun itself, right? The sun is bright, and as things are orbiting it, you can see how different parts of the planets might get the light or not get the light. And so, a way of doing, let's look in the processing reference. I honestly don't know a lot about, I don't, I'm, I have a live in fear of 3D. It's something I don't like to do because it makes, I sometimes get a stomach ache when I program things that are in 3D. <laughs> but I want to go to processing and I want to go to reference and I want to look for lights. And I'm going to look here and see there's all these different functions for different kinds of lights and I encourage you to explore them. <laughs> but I want to look at point light. What point light does is it adds a light, and you can see um, it has th six arguments. The red, green, and blue value, so what color is that light, 
and then the coordinate of the light. Well, this is really easy. I want a bright white light from where the sun is, which is at the center. So I can actually go back to my scene now, go back to the main draw, and right here, instead of saying lights, I can say point light, bright white, and at the centers of the world, zero, zero, zero. So let's run this. I actually have not tried this. I'm just assuming that it's going to work. And look at that. You can see now. Now, interestingly enough, you can't see the sun. I kind of love this, though. The sun is not getting its own light. So I don't know how best to remedy that, but we could also try turning the generic lights on. And it's still, it's not as effective because, um, but I could probably shine like a spotlight on the sun or something. I don't know. I don't really mind that though. But anyway, you can see that this, the effect is not as strong. Somebody watching this video will uh, come up with a nice way of lighting the sun and the other planets. But I, I like this effect of being able to see that shadowing um, and, uh, you know, maybe we could, but what would be interesting is to actually put lights on some of the other planets to see how that works. Oh, there's all sorts of possibilities there, but I've got to stop. I think I've given you some tools here. You know, I've given you a way of creating spheres as an object, of rotating spheres around other spheres, having those things be nested, having textures texture those spheres, and a little bit more on how you might like the scene in creative ways. So I hope you will explore this. Ah, something else you could do is put an image as the background, maybe a star field. You can see uh, in Andres' example how that works. I'll link to the code for that example as well in the description. Um, but make some creative experiments with this. Think about elliptical orbits. Be more thoughtful. Could you actually, you know, make Sun and the planets that are in our solar system, would you choose to include Pluto or not or some other new planetary discoveries? <laughs> uh, can you put a ring around Saturn? How might you do that? Oh, all sorts of interesting possibilities. So I encourage you to explore that stuff and share with me your solar system uh, processing sketches.